Good morning, good day. Today we are in Gambia, West Africa, and we are at the office of SNS Properties. We are about to interview Usman Bonjour, Bonjour, and Asitu <laughs> Jalo. So they're going to give us a lot of good information about Africans coming here from the diaspora, UK, America, and Caribbean, and how do we acquire land here. Take it away. Thank you. Welcome, Usman and Aisa, too. Um, thank you for this time for us. Um, Usman and Aisa, too, can you both introduce yourselves, please? My name is Aisa Pujado. I'm going to be the SMS for this. We do sell lands and we love a lot of I guess this is not my first time having an interview. Um, I'm Usman Boya, uh, currently the marketing manager of SNS Properties. So um, we do a lot of services, uh, we provide land sales, we get also the next for us, our brothers and sisters that are here in order for them to repatriate uh, back to Africa, especially uh, the Gambia, the smiling face of West Africa. So um, basically, uh, we do guide uh, our brothers and sisters in terms of plans, acquiring of plans, and also referring for solicitors that like they want to take legal actions towards the businesses that they want to uh, create in the Gambia. And uh, we do a lot of things. We will engage with the town guys, give uh, tourism, tourist guys uh, across the country. So uh, I'm an pan Africanist. Uh, I believe in social development, economic development of Africa. Yes. And uh, I advocate and work with different uh, groups of diaspora coming into the country at this current time. Uh, I'm working with African Pekingese at the moment. Uh, we are trying to make sure that uh, we enlighten and then educate the diaspora that are coming into Africa so that we can all integrate as one. Because uh, there are a lot of issues that are arising at this current time. Uh, because we all uh, know that the Gambia is not perfect, so uh, we've been through a lot. And now that our brothers and sisters, after 400 years of uh, being who uh, the light is gone. That's okay. That's one of the, the, um, the issues. issues of Africa. That, exactly. But it doesn't stop us. We keep yeah. moving forward. We keep moving forward. So as you see, uh, this is Africa. This is Gambia. It's a small piece. But um, the issues and challenges that we are facing both uh, the, the diaspora and also the local. So I would leave you uh, guys to give me ask questions that you want to know and I will be here to help. Okay. Yeah. I, what I really want us to focus on is what you were talking about before we start filming, which was just so real and authentic. Mm -hmm. If you could just speak on how a lot of Africans from the diaspora, the UK, the United States, and the Caribbean, we you know we think the motherland is like perfect, and we exactly. we put it as this mm -hmm. um, almost like a fairy tale. And exactly. then when we come here, mm -hmm. we are not equipped to deal with the reality. So exactly. if you could just kind of like demystify that utopia myth so that mm -hmm. we can understand like the real thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you very much for that. It's, it's definitely a challenge if I have to be really honest. Uh, we've been going through a lot of issues rising up within the communities and in the society of the diaspora integrated into Africa, especially mm -hmm. the Gambia. Uh, currently, as we are talking, we've seen there is uh, a form of like a segregation between the African Americans or the British that are coming into the country. They are building up their own communities mm -hmm. at this current time. Uh, I don't want to give names because I, I know that what is going on on the ground. Mm -hmm. They are building up their own communities. These are things that we don't need as Africans That's right. because uh, we've going we've gone through a lot of struggle to be where we are today. Mm -hmm. uh, we fought wars. We fought colonialism, a lot of, lot of things. The resources in Africa can sustain Africa. Yeah. yeah, but as the younger generation is rising, education is coming up also. Um, I would have been if, I, if my own brother and sister is coming from the diaspora, would come with his or her expertise in order to work together. Because I'm telling you this today. Speak a little louder. A lot of Islam. Africans, mm -hmm. a lot of Africans, young Africans don't believe that they can make it in Africa because of the, the influence of the West. So um, there are a lot of Africans that already try. Young Africans that died on the way to cross to the Mediterranean Sea. So which is a problem that our government cannot control. 
but we can make Africa a better place as for our own people to feel safe. That is that is on our own issues that we that, is, that we are experiencing. So if I can um, just interject, just to help give context, so mm -hmm. a lot of people watching this may not understand yeah. just the magnitude of what you're saying. You're basically saying that mm -hmm. there are a lot of young Africans, millennials and younger, who do not believe that yes. there's a chance in Africa. And exactly. so they risk their life exactly. and get on a boat yeah. and go to Italy yes, to exactly. try to make a better life. Right. Can you yeah. talk about exactly. that more? That is an issue right now that Africa is facing. And mm -hmm. across Africa, it's not only the Gambia, across Africa are mm -hmm. facing. Because uh, we come to the point whereby a lot of these youth don't even believe that they can make it in their own country. Mm -hmm. So you understand? Africa is suffering by losing its younger generation That's right, through yeah. the Mediterranean Sea. And then there are a lot of job and employment right now. There are a lot of youths, if you uh, observe when you're coming on the way, you look at the roadside, you see boys brewing at night. They're mm -hmm. sitting down. So when the society is desperate and then these people are coming, that's where chaos, conflict comes mm -hmm. in terms of crime rates. Because these people don't have job. Mm -hmm. that they will hold into and then they have families. Mm -hmm. Some of these youths are unfortunate to go to school. So it's like Africa itself is having is battling its own problems at this current time. So when these people when our own people are coming back, repatriating, and they also need to understand that the problems that Africa are facing at the moment. So they need to be prepared, not thinking that it's just a paradise that I'm coming and when I'm coming I'm gonna find this find this kind of land, this big last home. When you come, you're going to be in the same system. Mm -hmm. Because what happened is when you guys were on your way coming to here to the office, you suffered the struggle of the car and then the traffic congestion that yes. I suffered 10 years later, 10 years before you guys came. That's right. When you're sick right now to find a medical hospital that is professional in what they do, if you go to the local hospitals, you found out that our mothers and sisters are suffering. Mm -hmm. There are women that are dying during childbirth and it's affecting the country. So these are issues that, when I thought that my people are coming, our people are coming after four years of enslavement, four hundred, taken four hundred years, mm -hmm. taken from Africa and then being taken to the West. When they come, they I was expecting that things will change. Mm -hmm. We would work together as one, break the boundary of the separation that happens between us and them a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But when they come, they are building up because they know that Africa. The resources that are available, the lands are too many. We can give, we can share. That's the African mentality. But when we come together as one, we can work and achieve our goals. So if I may the, say that in Ghana, yeah. uh, with the, the topic you're talking about, mm -hmm. um, they were having that problem in Ghana. So now um, they're giving free land to Africans from the diaspora. Exactly. So now the president see that problem mm -hmm. of separation. Exactly. So now he's saying mm -hmm. that he's going to make it so you have to intricate, intricate exactly. with yeah. the Ghanaians yeah. so there's no separation. Exactly. And, and so what you're saying is correct. We can't really have separation and we have to come. Me, for myself, I was coming um, to help um, you know uh, my friend yeah. Rahima. Yeah. She had called me last year mm -hmm. because she has a Gambian friend that wants to build a hospital here. Yeah, exactly. So they called me to see mm -hmm. if I would come and offer my services mm -hmm. at the hospital that he's trying to build and I agreed to do yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, basically, these are problems that we need to understand within the society that we are facing. Africa is right now struggling. And uh, if you look at the, 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 whole, the whole of Africa, the resources that are taken in day to go to every day to be imported or exported at the, the West is too much. But it went to a point whereby Africans don't even believe that they can make it home. So that's the challenges that we are facing right now. So our confidence, our imagination, our exactly. faith, our hope have been totally hijacked. By the rest. Wow, mm -hmm. that's Because deep. what happens is they know that this is paradise. So let's get chaos here. Mm -hmm. So when you come, you find the same thing. Because the system always stays like that. It always remains. The difference between Africans that are here and the Africans that are there is the same problem. Of it's course. You know, the thing is, um, for me personally, I don't engage in discussions where people say, 
oh, African Americans don't like Africans or Africans don't like African Americans mm -hmm. because as you started off saying you're a Pan-African, mm -hmm. so am I. And I've never right. experienced that personally in my life mm -hmm. because I don't surround myself with closed-minded people. But there were a few people on YouTube who repatriated and I was following them on YouTube, but then I had to stop listening to them because they were speaking negatively about the Gambians and you don't do that. You don't go to someone's home and then talk about the people who are cooking food for you, like it's as a metaphor. But this, you know, I just feel like, as you said, Osman, we are all healing. We all have post-traumatic slave syndrome, like Dr. Joy DeGruy says, yeah. and we're all healing from colonialism and exactly. from the repercussions of mm -hmm. um, European enslavement, and we have to heal and just think mm -hmm. and love, and we all have to raise awareness, you exactly. know, mm -hmm. and just think differently, but how can you, like, just in terms of encouragement um, mm -hmm. around, like, you know, um, people in the West, we, we're very spoiled, I noticed. Yeah, like, yeah. we don't give gratitude. We don't say thank you, God. And, mm -hmm. like, I noticed my niece and I. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mama, say hi. hi. <laughs> <laughs> my niece and I, we went walking to the store last night. Mm -hmm. um, and I was noticing that it was still up. It was really late. I mean, mm -hmm. it was still open. It was, mm -hmm. like, 11 p.m., but the mm -hmm. store... They were just like playing Quran, yeah. you know, and I thought, oh wow, like in the U.S., you would hear people playing like hardcore hip hop or rap or pop or whatever, and so mm -hmm. here it's just more peaceful because even what's on in the background is like peace, calm, and I think um, like even one of my good friends in Senegal, like she wants everything to happen so fast, and she's like, oh, the Senegalese, they're too slow, they're too this, but it's like. No, it's not. The whole world is slower than America, and that's why the whole world lives longer and is happier. Like, we don't, we can't come to other countries and expect to um, do, like, American way. Exactly. Okay. Um, but any other things that you think people should do or I'd like learn? to know what services would you like um, to see Africans from the diaspora, what services you would like to see us come to offer Gambia? Yeah, that's, 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 that's a very good uh, question. Uh, basically, when I first heard uh, about the, the diasporas uh, mm -hmm. that came out on TV, on air, we talk about their citizenship, which was supposed to be granted by the government. I was in support of it. I was 100% in support of it. Because what happened is, there are our own people coming back to Africa. But uh, there is a lot of negativity. Mm. Going on, even if I lo I lost my phone, I used to last I lost my phone. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Sorry, I lost yeah, it. It's normal. It's normal to me. Mm -hmm. I had to put security uh, alarm in my car mm -hmm. because I am a Gambian. I'm safe in my own house, but I have to put it there for my own security. Right. There are certain things that the government can provide. There are certain things that you can provide for yourself. Like for instance, how safe are you living in a house you been alone throughout the world? It's not. You, live, you need to live with people, you need security. There are certain things that you need to know that this, I mean, this that there are certain things that you can do for yourself. Right. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've seen, I've watched a lot of videos, you know, in regards to, because what happened is the media, the, the people that are in control of the media, especially the people that are coming into Africa, they have a greater role to play. Because what happened is, I would be happy to see the services that you will be providing, because it's going to boost Africa to another level. They know that. I'm telling you, a lot of our sisters right now, their governments are blocking their accounts for them to send money to the Miami. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. Why? We have, we have two to three customers or four customers that right now wants to buy a piece of land, but they can Because they ask you questions. Do you have a contract with them? Are they like, how, 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 how so are we that they, what you're buying is true? You know, the bank asks you those questions. Mm -hmm. A contract agreement between you, the client, and the company. I've never seen a bank that does that in Africa. Wow. Because you save your money there. So, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So 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 basically we've seen all of that is because the reason why we're seeing all of that is they don't want you guys to come to Africa. 
So in order to discourage you guys to come to Africa, they will work on the ground, create wars, conflict, divide and rule and conquer. That is their aim and objective 400 years ago. They are still having that. Because if I go to Senegal, I need papers to show that I can enter Senegal. Right. And Gambia and Senegal is the same country. We speak the same language. Right. So, so we are battling that as Africans. So the people that are coming here needs to understand what we are going through. It would be great as a Gambian to support my own brother and sister coming from the diaspora to have their own citizenship that they can call themselves Africans. Right. I would definitely support that. But when they start building these communities, they bring in segregation to the community. In the future time also, it's destroying the future as a matter of fact. Uh, so um, the, 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 the property that we're buying, yes. is that going to be um, a segregated community mm -hmm. with Gambians? And it's a mix. It's a mix. It's so a that's mix. good. Gambians, average low income earners, doctors, okay, nurses, good. everybody. Is, that's how we, we sell our properties. We don't just segregate it. We mix everybody yes. okay. together. So that's a good start. Yeah. That's how we live as Africans. Of we course. mix it, integrate, and then we marry. You see, if a man married with a Mandinka, it's all the same. Yeah, we were just at my friend's house. She's Fulani and her husband is Mandinka. Exactly. We I had so that. much my, fun. My, my wife is an Akko. Akko? Yeah. Oh, I never heard of that ethnic group. It's in Sierra Leone. Oh, nice. So, That's amazing. So, um, I, in terms of different sectors of... Um, of work that you would like, our development, you would like to see Africans in the diaspora come and mm -hmm. help build? What are those exactly? First of all, the most important part, because what we say is life, and life is food. Mm -hmm. we, need to, we, need to, uh, we need to invest in agriculture. Of course, okay. when you have food, you have security. And when you have security, then you are safe. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. because like what's dead. happening in Yemen right now, exactly. they said probably maybe half a million children will, will die, die. Yeah. From, starvation from starvation who are under five. Yeah. Wow. So he brings up a very good point. Food exactly. is security. Is security. Mm -hmm. If Yemen could have, uh, would pro if they were able to provide their own food, right. those children will mm -hmm. not be starving. Even if the international community bring 10,000 samsons on them they will still manage to survive. Even with 10,000 sanctions, that is such a yeah. good point. Wow. They will still manage to survive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, food is first, security is second, and then our health. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What was second? Security. Security? Yeah. Food first, security, security second, second, and then health. health. When you have security, you're healthy. Do you believe that? I was gonna ask you to expand on security. What do you mean? When I, when I, have, when I have food to eat, Mm -hmm. And a place to say to sleep peacefully. That's security. Okay. Then I will be healthy. Because you have less stress exactly. and your immune system is stronger. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because so when you say security, you mean housing? Security in every way. Security in terms of armed robbery. Security in terms of murder. Security because uh, when I'm going outside and I feel like I'm threatened, mm -hmm. that's not peace. That's I don't not have peace. peace. Yeah. So when I have food, I have security, then I will be healthy. Anything that comes on my way, I can take it because I know that I'm peaceful. I know that I'm. So, like peace. starting security companies here? There are security companies here. We need to, uh, like, right now, I don't want to engage myself into politics because I'm not that kind of having right. a political mm -hmm. mindset. Mm -hmm. But how government rules, how they do things, is okay. everybody is entitled to his or her own, own opinion. But in terms of food, it's false priority because we need to invest on agriculture. Mm -hmm. I think I believe you guys should go on a tour. There are a lot of lands that are free for agriculture. But the problem is the, we don't have the people that comes, the people and the power. The technical skills. Exactly, to come mm -hmm. and then develop Africa. I don't know if you're aspect. familiar with Booker T. Washington. Are you familiar with him? I had the name. I read his book. It's mm -hmm. called Up From Slavery. So mm -hmm. he was a contemporary with um, W.E.B. Du Bois. He's African-American. He's African-American. Yeah. Um, and he basically said that mm -hmm. 
for us as Africans in America to free ourselves. We needed agricultural skills. We needed to know how to feed ourselves, grow our own food. So we are not dependent on the same system that's oppressing us. Because why would they want to feed us? And so a lot of the first Mm -hmm. historically black colleges, Mm -hmm. because like Booker T. Washington, his father's white, but he still, because he's black, like it didn't matter. So he had to go. He walked across a lot of states exactly. barefoot just yeah. to go to college yeah. and he had to work as a janitor to go to that college but in that school, in that university, he learned all these things that you're talking about exactly. and the, the first historically black colleges were all agricultural yeah. institutes yeah. because what he's saying is yeah. like absolutely imperative. Yeah. But we have lost so much of that, those, that skills and even in the United States mm-hmm. a lot of black farmers were yeah. like attacked and their lands were taken away from exactly. them yes. because as you're saying even in mm-hmm. wartime exactly. every any country at war, they're gonna bomb your agricultural infrastructure exactly. to make you weak. Exactly. Yeah. So we need they to work. develop that here. Yeah. Maybe, Maybe we can join in yeah. with some of the existing agricultural exactly. organizations and unions here exactly. and help that out. Yeah, we need yeah. to. That, that is something that is when we invest in agriculture, most of these food, we're not gonna depend on the West to survive. I know that's right. Yeah. yeah, the West will have to depend on us. But they're still depending on us. It's just like when they come, the system that they use. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The system is still bad. Exactly. So, yeah, it's still bad. We need to work towards changing that. This is great. So I would love. I'm not sorry. I would love to collaborate with you all. I think that mm-hmm. this Osman, you have a a true Pan African brain and. I have an organization called Deep Roots Health Consortium where Mm -hmm. I'm looking to collaborate with like-minded people who are allies and who are against colonization and who are really for upliftment of the entire world. Because it's possible. Yeah, it's possible. It's totally possible. It's totally possible. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I said too, did you want to say something? Just about the role of women, especially you yeah, as a yeah, woman yeah. in real estate, in which is a big deal. Yeah. I mean, in Africa and in the West, you know. So, speak about what brought you into this field. Exactly. Um, thank you so very much for the interview. I'm so glad of trying to explain how women feel. And it is not easy to work in this marketing uh, side because normally when you're working on the marketing side, what they tell you is that some people, a lot of people discourage you. Um, mm-hmm. You doing marketing this and this, but I think it is all uh, depend on your own hard working and knowing what you want uh, because when you know what you want actually, you will do as it is. So it is not easy being a woman, uh, working, cooking and having your family so Come on, keep it <laughs> so it's not easy but we are trying to welcome you all anytime you want to have a plot of land from as as properties you are highly welcome and our lands are saved and you can tell us anywhere you want inshallah by the grace of Allah we will do all our best to make customer satisfactions that all we do um, if you want to make a uh, site of building, if you have a plot of land, you want to build it when you come to SNS properties, we do all services for you. So I think Thank you. you are welcome. You are so sweet. <laughs> what I notice here is that the young people, you all are young, but y'all are so mature. Like, mm-hmm. y'all love God, y'all love your family, y'all very respectful. And I, I know there's a lot of Western culture in Africa mm-hmm. still, but how do you all keep, how do you all manage being young, but also staying respectful and keeping your culture? Like, I'm just curious. Yeah, it's all different on like the way they raised you at your home. Mm-hmm. I think um, that one is the first priority. If you're like, if your parents raise you that very well, um, you can go anywhere and you can mingle with any kind of person with respect. Because I think respect is the first priority. Because if you give a person a respect, that person will give, return it back to you. So so normally that's what we do as our living. Um, uh, giving respect to our elders and our youngest can give us respect back. 
That's how we lived. That's the culture. That's the that's culture. The culture. Yeah. Yeah, that's the yes. culture. So I have a question because I I really mostly know Senegal and I love Senegal mm -hmm. and I love I just love Senegal. But if you all can tell me about wow. right, mm -hmm. are there any conflicts here with ethnic groups? Are all the ethnics united? <laughs> um, or does like I I spent three months in Ethiopia and it's like a lot of tension there with ethnic groups. You said I am a fuller, this man is a jawler. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are one. Even, even <laughs> on my Hedika, in my Hedika, on my Hedika or Passport, you don't see a fuller or jawler. You see okay. Gambians. Oh, that's nice. Yes, we are Gambians. We are Gambians. We, are Gambians. we, we don't uh, have time of, uh, how to call it, tribalism. And because if you look at our company, we have different ethnic different groups. Different groups. Because different there is Mandinka, there is Fula, there is Jola, there yes, is Sarahuli, there is Syria. But we are all one. We are yes, okay. the, 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 the thing, the reason, uh, I'm going to answer that question to you. <laughs> and I, was, I will answer it in, in form of political motivation. <laughs> the reason why there is too much bad energy in the political motivation, uh, in the political era is that they want to introduce, but it cannot go. We fought ethnicity a mm. long time ago. Mm. Africans didn't know the division and segregation. Mm. We fought that. So it will never work in Africa. Anywhere you see there is just ethnic issues, know that there is an influence coming out. Uh, yes. There is an influence coming out. So, so, so we don't know that. In Africa, in the Gambia, it never works. It will never work here. That's a blessing. It will never work. Yeah, because um, our our friend and driver, he's mm -hmm. Fulani, yes. and he um, his name is Moses, and mm -hmm. he went to Mauritania for yeah. three years, mm -hmm. and he said he couldn't believe like the ethnic divisions there, like the Sarahule, the Fulani, yeah. the um, I think the Kahasani, mm -hmm. I don't know the other ethnic. Anyway, but he was saying like. That's crazy because in Gambia it's so different. He said he never seen anything like that before wow. until he went to Mauritania. Um, so, if do you, when you all were colonized by the British, did the British try to make you all be segregated or divisive? Well, uh, it is not the British. Remember, the British were not the only people that came to Africa, especially in the Gambia. The Portuguese came, the, the Spanish came. Oh wow! But the thing is that. Like, uh, when they came, the reason, do you know how, how the slave trade came in existence, especially in the Gambia? When they came, they find us united. So they divide us by talking to our, our elders, because the younger generation respect their elders, even today, mm -hmm. exists today. The culture still remains the same. So when they come to the elders, they use their influence. We didn't sold our brothers up. We didn't. To tell you the truth, we didn't sold our brothers and sisters up. They divide, rule, and conquer us. And it's because true if I can look at Esther as my own sister, Esther would look at somebody else as, as his or her own sister too. But mm. when you start to segregate between me and Esther, then I will look at Esther as a threat. That's right. So that's how it goes. But in terms of ethnicity, Africa needs to wake up. It needs oh, to wow. rise up. We, will be uh, we are trying to make this international relationships within mm -hmm. Africa itself. Mm -hmm. So that we can break these boundaries because our leaders have the roles to play. And if they don't, as younger generations also have roles to play. So right. we are educating. Yeah. We're trying our level best to make sure that we make Africa a better place. That's good to hear because I remember reading um, Kwame and Kuma's book exactly. many years ago, um, mm -hmm. Africa Must Unite. And he did talk about in the book mm -hmm. that um, classism. Um, does exist in Africa and tribalism does exist in Africa mm -hmm. as well as sexism and he talked about how important it is to have the empowerment of women and Seiko Ture talked about the same thing so it's really good news to hear that that is not existing in the Gambia you know this ethnic thing yeah. well, um, also but, back then they were more adamant about creating alliances because didn't Nkrumah marry um, Gamal Nasser's daughter the married, president of Egypt's daughter yes you know yes, but, um, yes let me just say yes to that mm -hmm. but sometimes you know back in those days those were political 
um, marriages right. to maybe forge exactly. different countries together. Yes. Absolutely. So, um, but I did want to address one thing you were saying, and then maybe we can close out the um, interview. Um, you said two is safety. Mm -hmm. If um, people from the diaspora are coming here that are, you know, wanting to retire mm -hmm. in the country, mm -hmm. um, are you thinking that it's not safe for a woman to come alone and live by herself, maybe, for safety? Basically, that was the reason why I said we need to break the boundary of segregating ourselves. These people living there, because what happened is, in every during the the old days, you know, um, we have different sections of elders' homes. Mm -hmm. You need to find out. You need to go to your culture. You will find the roots. Everything. You will see a family. If I was having a book, I will show you. You will see this portion. There is a family. Let's say, for instance, this is family A, family B, family C and D within the community. Mm -hmm. Family A has an elder who protects the community. Mm -hmm. the, inside the house, we have a place store for ladies, mm -hmm. male and adults. We separate them oh, I see. in order to secure them. Okay. The same, the same. So we protect the family. The elder comes and stay at the gate in order to protect from external aggressions. To make the ladies feel safe and the children in the compound feel safe. Okay. They still exist in our in our communities. Wow. Mm -hmm. As culture. That's how we know. That's why anywhere you go to Gandhi, when you ask for the head of the compound, they show you the head of the compound. As he is the leader who leads everybody. So the security there is him securing the compound. So if you come and you want to stay alone, like I said, the segregation is started, who is going to protect you? Exactly. That's so I need to make, we need to make sure that we're in that in compound. together. Are we there? We are there, right? In yeah. Tanji? Are exactly. we integrated? You will, because yeah. your neighbors will be your family. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. In, uh, in Gambia, when one neighbor cries, everybody, everybody comes, comes out. out. Oh. That's, 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 that's Gambia. That's, that's, that's how so it sweet. is. Okay. When somebody south, everybody will come and say, what happened? <laughs> okay. Are you safe? Okay. You understand okay. my point? Okay. So, so, yeah. so this is culture in Africa. You know, um, a dear friend of mine from Gambia passed away um, mm -hmm. August the 2020. Yeah. Yeah. He's, what, well, he was a great man. His name was Bamba Saho. Mm -hmm. And I'm meeting with his son tomorrow to go to his gravesite. Yeah. But he was such a great man. Mm -hmm. He carried his culture with him. Exactly. One time, mm -hmm. he seen this man take a woman's purse. Mm -hmm. It made the newspaper. Mm -hmm. Bamba chased that man through the streets exactly. and took that purse mm -hmm. from that man mm -hmm. and got the purse back. I mean, <laughs> that's a great Gambian man. It was all in the newspaper and everything. Yeah, that's true. So I can feel that. Yes, yeah. That's why normally when it happens, we say that before your family coming and support you, the first priority is your neighbors. Be so hmm. kind to your neighbors. Come on. At least if you have any issue before your family come in, your neighbors will be the first person to attend and give exactly. your help. So normally that's what uh, we Africans we normally do, especially the Gambia. Yes, we that's so one. important. Yeah. We are mm. one, we are united, uh, we do fight all the time. But yeah, the next fight. minute, mm. Mm. and you see us also as people where wow, I think these people we are fighting, but yeah. after all, we are all equal. Yeah. We treat ourselves like mm. we are all the same. So that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's also part of mm -hmm. Africa. Especially on that mm -hmm. we have the, a lot of different people, mm -hmm. Black American, Burgess, Gambians also. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be very nice. Especially yes. you have a neighbor. Yes. <laughs> yes. And yes. you have yes. a neighbor yes. there. So. Yes. Exactly. So, this is going to yeah. be great. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you were saying that's also Pan African, yeah. Osman? Yeah. Yeah. What, what part of it exactly? Basically, we don't normally, like when we are selling lands, we don't say that we reserve this for a diaspora spot. Right. For this. No, 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 we make it general. Mm -hmm. For everybody to come and have their own things, mm -hmm. in respect of what you do or how you are. And I think being able to forgive also mm -hmm. is part of the Pan African personality because I think a lot of times, as people in the African community, 
we stop working together because we get mad at each other for things and it's like oh I'm not gonna work with you anymore and then two years of work goes down the drain and I think we have to learn to forgive each other and just keep moving forward yeah we yeah. have to like uh, in order for us to change this mindset we start with the younger generation mm. Mm. because uh, the elder generation uh, the elder if you look at 80 percent of the gun of the Afro, across Africa is young Mm-hmm. So, the younger generation, we have a bigger role to play in the younger generation. Okay, because division and separation, we can stop that as Africans. We can stop that. It's very easy to stop it. Because once I see, start seeing myself like how I see Isaac, Isaac will say to another person, it's like a new dimension of change. We need changes. The only reason why you see Africans killing Africans is because political interference. Right. That's the truth. Mm-hmm. And that is the second thing. But um, the influence of the West will still be there because we know how things are. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine if you look at the resources coming out of Africa? Mm-hmm. Africa is feeding Europe at this moment. Exactly. But our, our, our elders, our leaders go and they take loans. Loans that you know at the end of the day you pay by interest. Can you imagine? That's silly. That's, no, that's, that's, that's like the. Uh, Everything. Like through the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, is destroying the all of the developing Africa, world. Africa supports the world. It because killed Jamaica. You see, it kills Jamaica. It killed Jamaica. Have you ever seen this documentary called Life and Debt? It's so good. You need to see it. It's on YouTube for free. It talks about how once they took out that loan from the IMF, mm-hmm. it destroyed first their agricultural sector. So now they import oranges from Mexico when they have oranges I mean it's crazy it's even happening in Africa. that's crazy it's just like Puerto Rico I the United mean. States will not allow Puerto Rico to grow their own food they because can only grow a small percentage because yeah. of the loan yeah. yes yeah. when the loan is coming if Africa can pay its, its debt then they, they come with interest the interest is yeah. if you cannot pay with the interest they tell you okay I'm going to take this portion Yeah. if you don't they bring some sun if you don't, bring war. They bring war. That's what they did to Argentina. Yeah, when Argentina war. refused those loans, oh my God. They war on you. And you mm-hmm. your own people. And you yeah, your, people. your own people. Before they penetrate, they divide and conquer you. That's the, the next worst. thing you know, Mashallah, you're very smart, Usman, and you too, Aisachu. Thank you for sharing all of this information with us. What did you all study in college? Were you all like journalism? Like, what was your... um, Let me tell you something. I will give you this as free. Okay. Africans don't need education to develop ourselves. <laughs> Come on. I'm telling you. Come this. on. Okay. We don't need education. Because okay. education is just a paper. What's really important is what you think here in the brain and your mm-hmm. Africans are skilled. I'm telling you. They have a lot of talents in Africa. They don't, some people don't even go to school. That's we, right. we inherit that. That's that right. is nature. That's nature. That's real That's talent. natural talent. The reason why we have a lot of these problems in Africa is because of the paper. Wow. And it brings a lot of division and segregation mm. between us. Wow, that's That deep. is costly. Because we've been protecting ourselves for a long time. We have mm. even the West. MashaAllah. Yeah. Thank you. That was Thank so you. good. Thank you, Thank you all. That was You're so good. Welcome. SNS Properties. SNS Properties.